Well, we're glad to be back home and in Tennessee. I love the ocean, but it's always good to come home, ain't it? Uh, we uh, didn't catch any big sharks, but I did catch one shark. It was about the size of the one that I had when I was a kid that I used to play with in the bathtub. It went with my G.I. Joe, so, you know, about that long. Uh, we had a good time. The beach was beautiful. The fellowship was great, and uh, the weather was wonderful. Uh, the first day, it rained all day, and I said, well, that don't sound like much fun. That meant we spent the inside time with the family playing games and puzzles and just having fun together. So it was a great time, uh, a time that was needed by me and maybe nobody else, but at least for me. Uh, but <clears throat> here lately, my fishing is usually uh, just on vacation. And uh, so since I've been on vacation while I was down by the sea, thinking about all the things that needed to be discussed, uh, it seemed like fishing would be a good thing to talk about for the next few weeks, uh, the good Lord willing. So if you will, turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 5. <clears throat> and we're going to look that, at Jesus was teaching down by the sea, actually uh, the lake of Gerenesat, if that's the way you pronounce it, the Sea of Galilee. One time when we was young, we was talking about all the places that we wanted to go to. What's a dream place you want to go to? And I would say Hawaii or Caribbean or the Bahamas, or Florida. Those were all. And so, you know, they said, well, what would your wife like to do? So I asked her, I said, where would you like to go? And she said, Greece. I said, why? <laughs> and since then, Internet's come out. Uh, man, they have beautiful seas over there. Have you ever seen some of the, the sea in, in Greece? Man, maybe we ought to go to Greece, honey. So anyhow, uh, the, the water is, is beautiful uh, all around the world. Uh, right here in verse 1, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gerenesat and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone up out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now we saw something that we normally don't see this year at the sea that we was at. It was a narrow beach this year. Uh, a narrow beach. Uh, you know, uh, last time we was down in in Gulf Shores with y'all, you remember how wide the beach was? You had to walk forever, even after you got out off the steps, to get out to the water. It was a big beach. Here, uh, the commentary suggested it was a small beach, and the people was pressing in on them is why he went out into the boat. But uh, another thing is, uh, I think with him being the creator of all things, he understood a little bit about sound and and how sound travels on water, because we saw a ship, a boat, a fishing boat, that was approximately 13 miles out from the, the shore, and on this particular day, the water was not very rough. It was very, actually very calm, almost like a lake. And you could actually hear the diesel engines 13 miles away as it was uh, going out to sea. It's like, man, you know. So Christ got into the boat, went out just a little distance, and he talked to, to the multitudes. And uh, in verse 4, Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft. And we've covered this lesson 
a few times over the, the many years. But Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Now Simon Peter is not very familiar with Christ at this time. All right? He's not Lord and Savior right now. He's a man that's teaching. Okay? He doesn't know him as Christ. But now he's listening to his teaching. He was accommodating. What was Jesus' earthly job besides Messiah? Carpenter. If you're a carpenter, how do you like it when a mechanic comes over and tells you how to do your job? If you're a mechanic, how do you like it when a carpenter comes over and tells you how to do your job? Or if you're a truck driver, how do you like it when people say, well, yeah, you can get that trailer in there. I get my trailer in there all the time. And you come to find out he had a 10 by 16 or something like that, you know, or a 5 by 10 and you're in a 48 footer. I told that man one time, he kept on and I just parked my truck. I got out. I said, you show me then. Oh, no, mine ain't that big. I said, all right, just go back to your house and I'll get out of here. You done got me back here. You lied to me. Tell me I could get a tractor trailer back here. And anyway. And Simon said, are you a fisherman or what? No, that's not what he said, is it? He said, Lord, you know, I mean, you saw us cleaning the nets. We fished all night. We know these waters, you know, and we know the time the fish are in, the fish are out. I mean, it always is good for somebody to know the water, you know what I mean? To know where you're at and where to fish. If not, you'll do like I did. You go down there and you'll fish all day and catch nothing, you know. So who is this man? We've told all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. You might take and put a set of parentheses around nevertheless and go down there around the net. Trusting his word equals faith. Guys, wouldn't you say that Peter, as a fisherman, the owner of two fishing vessels, would know if fish was there or not? Wouldn't it take faith, believing what this man has said to you, to drop your nets again? Because, see, when you, when you drop your nets, if you do or don't catch fish, there's times that the nets drag through stuff and break and tear. You have to clean and repair. If not, your nets rot. That's your livelihood. So he knows he's worked all night. You ever work all night or all day and you're tired? You're done. Now you got to drop your nets again. And that means when you get done, to <laughs> let me tell you, I told the boys, I said, Pappy's awful tired. If y'all want to fish, y'all got to drag the poles down here. When you're done, you got to take them back up. You're going to have to help me clean them because I just can't do all that no more. You're going to have to help me. So I can relate to Peter here. You know, we've, Lord, I'm tired. I done, I done, look, my nets. He didn't say nothing. He says, nevertheless, it's your word. I let down the net. So we see his faith is already being demonstrated early in their relationship. Verse 6, And when they had done this and had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. All day, 
All night, I mean. And nothing. Christ wanted to use their boats for a minute. Preach the word. Then he wanted to give them a draft of fish. A harvest of fish. So much so that it, it almost sank the boats. It was sinking the boats. Wow. Now let's see. If you're not careful, you could come up and say, you know what? Simon and Son Fisheries. Man, we're going to make it big because we we found this man that's going to help put us on the fish all the time. We're going to market this to nobody's business, right? We'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> Man's extremity is God's opportunity. They fished all night and caught nothing. This was an opportunity for Christ to identify who he was. And... uh Failure to this point is, is really not a factor. Failure in our lives to this point really doesn't factor. Once we meet Jesus, all things change. You know, your, your forever changes. Uh, we used to have a shirt that said that, forever changed. Forever changed, and you're forever changed, and you are forever changed. Uh, here we, we see that. And uh, so... The net broke because there were so many fish. Now, what this miracle required, would you say this is a miracle? I'd say this is a miracle. I prayed for a miracle the other day. I said, Lord, let one of them big hammerhead sharks, because we saw one. Isaac saw it. He was out there with it. He was chasing a stingray around about 10 foot. I said, Lord, send that thing over and let it bite Oliver's pole. <laughs> you know, uh, but anyway... This miracle required action when the goal seemed impossible. What did Peter really want to say? What did Simon Peter really want to say? Lord, we fished all night. There ain't no way I'm, my nets are clean and put away. I'm done. How many times have you told God that? I'm done for this day. Catch me tomorrow. You don't ever wonder why you don't see the miracle of the fish? You ever wonder why your nets don't break with bounty? Maybe it's because we're too tired to listen to our Savior or to walk in the faith that Simon demonstrated. Question. I'm just trying to be practical with a, a lesson to really get us to thinking about this. Was Peter tired? Was Peter divine? Was Peter just an old sailor fisherman? He had finished his toil for the day. His labor for the day was done. It, what, what do you want to do at the end of the day when your work is finished and you've worked your butt off to get to this point so you can go home and, what do we say, plop down in the lazy boy or go to bed, prop my feet up and take it easy for a few minutes before I go to bed? Isn't that what we say? Well, that's where Peter was. Man, I'm just, you want me to go back out there? I just got in from out there. You saw us over here. I'm, I'm, I've got all my nets. They're stitched back up. They're folded. They're dried. They're ready to go back out tomorrow. And you want to go now? Again? <laughs> Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. And so when they had done this, enclosed a great multitude of fishes in the net, and they filled up. Now verse 8, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' feet, at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draught of fish of the fishes which they had taken. So, what this miracle required was action when the goal seemed impossible. It required work when fatigue called for rest. Are you getting the picture here? 
We want to see the miracle of God's hand move in our life amongst the things that He's asking us to do. But how many times do we get to that point and we're tired? You don't understand. I'm old. I'm tired. I'm weary. He says, drop out the net. He didn't promise them nothing, did he? He didn't say, look, if you'll drop your net, man, I'm going to give you a bounty like you're not going to believe. He didn't tell them nothing. He says, drop out your net. Look, I just want you, do you, do you get the feeling, or am, I, am I doing it properly to get you to understand Peter really didn't want to do this. All right? His, his natural state. Just think of your natural state at the end of your day when you're tired. What if I come up and ask you, I know I'm not Jesus, but if I ask you to, let's, JC, I know you're tired, you've been working on it all day, but the rear end of my, my old pickup truck's gone out. Would you help me re, rebuild that thing real quick? Just real quick. Just for the next few hours. Would you climb back under here for me and help me, you know? I know what I would say if you came and asked me. I'm tired. I'm old. <laughs> I'm not a very good mechanic. You might want to get Ben to help you. <laughs> then I might miss something that you would share with me. You know? There's not a promise. There wasn't a promise for that. He just told him to drop the nets. They dropped the nets, and it, 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 it broke their nets. There were so many fish. Uh, so what did this miracle require? It required action when the goal seemed impossible. He knew that the fish had done moved out for the morning. Uh, work, when, when the body was in fatigue, was calling for rest. And then it required, I think, the most important thing, faith. When circumstances called for doubt. I know I bring these people up all the time, but those, those 12 witness, the, the twelve spies that they sent out to, to witness the land, what if they had mingled like Caleb and Joshua did, a little bit of faith with what they had seen? You know? How many times do we miss the promises. But sometimes we miss promises just because we're, we're too tired to take that final step. You know, it's, it's really amazing to me how we get so close sometimes to having what some people term a breakthrough, you know, or James Ryle used to talk about a defining moment in your life. That defining time when you finally made the decision to follow after Christ to the point of there, there's no turning back. Uh, some history person, if I'd probably done a little bit of more study on this, I could remember. Who was the conquerors that left and went to get gold, and then when they hit the land, they burnt the ships because there was no going back? Y'all remember? Y'all know who I'm talking about, but... Uh, in all honesty, when we decide to follow Jesus, that's what we need to do. We need to burn our ship because there's no going back from this point. Yeah. Let's go on. Let's continue with the lesson real quick. Uh, so what the miracle required was action when the goal seemed impossible, work when fatigue called for rest, and faith when circumstances called for doubt. Uh, there's times that we look around and we see, well, this, can't, this ain't going to work out so well. So that's when we need to apply faith. If God's called you to it, then He's going to get you through it, right? Uh, what this miracle demonstrated was the Lordship of, of Christ. Christ controls everything. The sea, the fish in the sea, the birds of the air, the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets. Mankind. It demonstrates 
Number two, God's care for our physical needs. Demonstrates the power of Christ over nature. And God's power to bless is greater than our capacity to contain. Their nets couldn't contain all of God's bounty. But now we see, first we saw the broken net. The next in this lesson, we're going to see a broken man, and that's what we just read. In verse 8, When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draft of the fishes which they had taken. Seems like a kind of a strange reaction, doesn't it? Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man. Peter knows that he's in the presence of the Lord. I kind of did some of my testimony once again about that day with, with Bill. And uh, when all the, the weight of sin and guilt was lifted off of me when I knew what Jesus really was. And it wouldn't, I'm thankful for Bill and all that he taught me up to that point, but that point, Jesus was present with me. And I knew it was Jesus. And I knew Jesus was the one that was setting me free. This is that defining moment, if you want to call it that, with Simon Peter. He knew Christ was not just a man. Christ was Messiah. And that's why he fell down to his knees and said, depart me from a sinful man. Isaiah did the same thing when he was in the presence of God. You know, I'm a sinful man with a sinful tongue from a people with a bad mouth, you know. And the angel took the coal of fire off the, the altar of God and came and touched his lips. They'd be clean. So here we see that there was a broken net that man's capacity to handle God's blessing cannot contain and hold God's blessing. So they had the broken net and then the broken man. And then we're going to see a, a broken man and repentance. We see later Peter's repentance after the denials. You know, he denied Christ three times late in the ministry. And then he repented three times. Uh, and we're going to see a, a broken partnership. Let's look down here in verse 10. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men, or thou shalt be fishers of men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. <laughs> wow. Really? The all? They, they forsook all? Look, the, one of their best bounties. They'd caught nothing. Now they came in. Their nets are broke. Peter's broken. He's repenting, trying to get, figure out who this Christ is. He says, look, y'all going to be fishers. I mean, y'all going to follow me. What we say repentance is turning, right? Well, they not only turn from sin, they turn from the world completely. They walked off their jobs, if you want to call it that. They walked away from their business. You know what it says? Did I miss something? And when they had brought their ships to land, no, the word says they forsook all. Let me go bury my old daddy. Let me go tell my family bye. Could this, could this be? Is this Messiah? Is this Jesus the Christ? Is this...
who are the partners with Simon? You know, the sons of said the I'm surprised they didn't come and say, look, hey, let's get this man and just make him partners with us and a captain, and we can call this Simon and Johnson Associates, world's largest fisheries. Uh, you know, I mean, fish for less from your big fishermen. I mean, there's all kinds of possibilities. We could market this thing and, and make ourselves a, 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 a fortune with this Christ guy. But one statement changed all that. From henceforth thou shalt catch men. From perch to people. Leaving their boats in verse 11 is a picture of surrender. When they brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. What must you leave in order to surrender? let Christ be make you a fisher of men when they brought their ships to land they forsook all and followed after him just as I am without one but Ah. Uh -huh. 